You're listening to the Less Stress, More Fun podcast. Today, we're going to be solving the equation of work plus vacation equals what? You are listening to the Less Stress, More Fun podcast. I'm your host, Master Certified Coach Lisa Schwaller. Each week on the podcast, we talk about how you can rise above the stress of modern living so that you can focus your energy on what matters most and have a lot more fun in the process. All right, let's get started. Welcome in. Ah, yes, darling, I've ordered you one of those fruity drinks with an umbrella in it. (laughs) Today's topic is about working on vacation, and it's not going to be about working on vacation. It's going to be about your choice about whether or not to work while you're on vacation or even sick. With that funny welcome in about the fruity drinks with an umbrella in it, I definitely wanted to share with you my new summer favorite. I have been brewing hibiscus tea and I cool it and then add it with some of that fizzy water like the mineral waters or the sparkling waters and it is so refreshing and it's the perfect color to have an umbrella with it. So with that, let's dive right in. Okay, the internet. It has brought us many wonderful things, technology. In fact, that's how we're able to spend time together over space and time. Isn't that wonderful? I think that's great. And the always on availability of the internet means that for a lot of us, it's introduced a nonstop flow of expectation into our lives. We say we're busy all the time. It's a badge of honor in our culture to answer the question, how are you? With the word busy, 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 you know how it is. (laughs) We feel like we're expected to be busier because we're accessible all the time. They say that most Americans don't take their allotted time off because it just feels like the price to leave work seems too high for most people to pay. And I really want to dive into that. I mean, as this is coming out, it's summer, maybe you're embarking on summer vacations or even thinking ahead to the holiday season at the end of the year. We're not going to be talking about should you take time off, should you not take time off. I think that's such a personal choice. And I also believe that the reason that you would take off or not, that you would unplug or not, is really related to some things that maybe you haven't considered or evaluating. Why would you even consider working on vacation? It's so interesting. I I work with people all around the world, and there are several cultures around the world that think it's really odd to work, to check in on work, to answer email, to attend meetings while you're on vacation or sick. But if you were considering it, the three reasons that I see people doing it sort of unconsciously or unintentionally is because of expectation, because of fear, and because of identity. Of course, you're an individual, your own reasons and profile are going to be unique to you, but for yourself, and especially if you manage a team, if you notice people taking vacation and working, is getting really curious what the reasons may be. And these are the three reasons that I see most frequently. The first one is expectation. What do I mean by that? I think Back to that, how are you? Busy. I think that there is an inaccurate correlation between busyness and worthiness. That if you're busy, it must mean you're a very good, worthy, valuable person. And in fact, for some people, they wouldn't necessarily say this consciously, but I think some people feel like leisure time, being unplugged is for rich, bad people, celebrities, Europeans. <laughs> we, we don't necessarily think that being unplugged is something that is just part of our human existence. We, it almost feels like you have to 
be earned into it or it's for the lucky ones. I also think in the category of expectation, the culture, and I'm, you know, use that very broadly, I think we think that we are expected to be responsive at the speed of light, whether it's necessary, helpful, or even valuable in and of itself. The expectation to be always available makes people feel a certain pressure to work while they're on vacation or sick. The second piece that I see most commonly, or the second reason more specifically, is fear. And this is just a subset of expectations. If there's an expectation that you have of yourself and others, or you feel others have of you, then it would make sense that if you're not complying, that maybe there's some fear of consequence. And what is so unusual is, again, most people wouldn't really say it like this, but they think that if they're not always available, if they're not highly responsive, if they really do take their time off, that people will think, well, we got away with them not being here on Tuesday. We may never need them around at all. (laughs) Which, I mean, to be blunt, every single one of us is replaceable in our work. So, not working on vacation, translating to getting laid off. I mean, I don't think there's a direct connection. And maybe there are some terrible people who are like, you know what, that so-and-so, they always took their time off. Maybe they should be the first to go. And I also wonder if at the end of your life, when you're 85, 90, 100 years old, looking back on your time, um, was it worth it? It's just very interesting to see that fear And the consequence, statistically, most of the time you just take your time off, there's not going to be a dire consequence. So really, really analyze that in your own life if this is something that applies to you, or it could be something that you help your team members with if you manage a team. The third reason that people might feel like they need to check in from vacation or while they're sick is because of identity. Work has become an expression of self. Work should be satisfying. We're supposed to feel passionate about it. And it becomes a very large component of how we express ourselves with our lives. For some people, work becomes a really big part of how we know whether we've gotten anything important done during a day. And Our human brain kind of tends to blow that out of proportion. So work is important. I love to work. And it's not the only thing about us. This isn't to discourage you from working on vacation or encourage you to unplug. It's really to notice the reasons that you may be making one decision compared to another decision. Ask yourself... Have you ever made a deliberate decision ahead of time of whether you're going to work on vacation, whether you're going to check in while you're sick? Is this something that you do on autopilot or is it intentional? Being intentional with your choice, it's so empowering. Let's have a couple of scenarios and break this down. Let's imagine that you're going on a holiday vacation You're going to be off work for five days, a full work week, and you would like to check your email, but you don't want to deal with a grumpy partner, travel partner, who is expecting you to be logged off the full time. What if you have blocked your time out, you have done a very nice job of keeping your calendar tidy, And you have it clearly marked that you're out of office for those days and people are inviting you into meetings. Would you invite them in or would you tell them to pick another time when you're available or point them to a designated backup? In just that one scenario, what comes to mind for you? And notice whether anything that comes to mind is around the expectations people may feel of you or you feel of yourself the trade-offs you might make, the concerns, the consequences, your wishes, all of it. 
notice that there are so many stories in our minds about what we should do or shouldn't do. And again, a lot of times we're just kind of making our choices on autopilot or we're just making the choice that seems to avoid the most perceived pain. But I invite you that there is actually a better way, and that's to get to know yourself by asking some questions around deciding what's right for you and your fellow travelers if you're taking time off for vacation or if you're sick. So while you're deciding if you're going to work all some partial, none, whatever that looks like for you, here are three questions you can ask yourself to help with that decision making. The first question is, what result do you want to have a week after you return to the office? I think our minds will focus on getting ready, being on vacation, and the initial re-entry period. But imagine it's a short-term future from returning from vacation. It's a week after vacation. Are you um, glad you took the time off completely? Did it cause a lot of stress? And again, this takes your mind past that initial reentry period, which is a transition sometimes for some of us. So it gives you a little bit of space to make the decision of a week after, a month after, six months after, Will it have mattered if I made this decision or this decision? And it gives your mind a little bit of space to play with instead of thinking of avoiding pain in the moment, which is what our brains will stay busy with if we let them. The second question is, what is the consequence of working during your vacation or while you're sick? What is the consequence of not working? during your vacation or while you're sick. Write down all of the pros, the cons, and not just to get a pro and con list and pick the one that's got the longest (laughs) line of entries, but notice on your pro and con list how many of them are real, true, actually going to happen, and how much of it may be storytelling. Question number three, what decision would you make with your gut? Yeah, just asking yourself, do you know what you want to do and you're not doing it out of expectation, fear, or even an identity that you have around who you are in relation to your work? What if that none of that actually mattered? What if you asked yourself, like, what do I want? And you danced with giving yourself what you want. That's one way to stop the squirrely mind, to get out of being reactive And to get out of the storytelling that can come with expectation and other things that we have talked about. I think you can make the decision every time you're out of office. You don't need to be the person who's never unreachable or always highly available. No matter what you choose, you just decide for that time period, communicate it, and then follow through with it. And again, You can make the decision every single time. I know when I'm out of office, I just make a a decision every single time in advance. It's part of my planning process. And then the most important part is the communication and sticking with it. So let's talk about the communication plan. Decide ahead of time what your email strategy is going to be while you're on vacation. Are you going to check it at all? Not at all? Once a day? Sink into what feels best for you long term. You get to decide, are you available by the phone? And if so, what the turnaround times are going to be and whether you're going to attend any meetings that are scheduled. And then, oh, and this is so important. I, oh, I wish you could see my arms raised emphatically. It's so, so important to teach yourself and others that you mean what you say by following through on your pre-decided plan. So that's great. I love to say, all right, so here's, I'm going to be out these days. This is what you can expect from me. I'm going to check email first thing in the morning before 8 a.m. Central Time, and then I'll be offline again until the next morning around 7 Here are the people you can reach if you have an issue. Here are the things 
I've set up in advance, and then I stick with it. And people have come to really know how to work with me over time. For me, the check every morning, I don't mind it. I'm usually just drinking my coffee anyway. And for me, it actually feels really, it lets me really enjoy the rest of the day to do the morning check-in. Some people want to be unplugged completely. And some people, they don't want to let go of certain calls or meetings or whatever. And you know what? No judgment. None. You get to decide what's right for you. Just know why you're doing it and do it for reasons that you love. I love my out-of-office pre-planning. There are times where I'll say, I'm going to be off-off. I'm not going to be reachable. I'm, I'm so clean and clear in my communications that it really just has never been a problem for me. On the flip side, I love supporting other people's decisions. For colleagues, people who are expecting to be out of office that we're working on projects together, we'd have a conversation. And I, if they haven't proactively communicated their communication plan, I proactively invite them into a conversation about it. I ask, what's your intended approach? How can I support you? Is there anything you want me to look out for while you're out? Are there calls that I can sit in on? Do you want me to send you email right away so you can digest? Or do you want me to schedule them to arrive when you return? I, I love s- Slack, email. You can schedule those things to arrive later. And I use that very frequently. I like to make sure that I'm helping set expectations by delivering things when it is necessary. I work with teams that are in other countries when they're on their holidays, and a lot of them are cultural or religious in nature. You know, if I think of something I want to tell them, but it's not time sensitive, I'll schedule it for when they come back. It's awesome. That is my way of building a work culture that I think is loving and supportive and actually promotes really good work. I firmly believe that we need major cultural overhauls in our relationship with work. Just because the technology makes us ever accessible doesn't mean that we're no longer people. Maybe the technology is going to take over. Maybe this attitude that I have is outdated. And you know what? Other people get to live their life the way they do. And I also see, especially in yet another economic downturn, We give so much to companies that offer no loyalty in return. Recently, I know of people who've gone through health concerns. I recently lost a dear former colleague. Very surprising. One day he was there and the next day he's gone. And I just hope that for people who are facing illness or losing a loved one, that that person who's no longer with us felt really, really good, intentional, and decided about the relationship that they had to their work. Our collective strategy of staying busy and overworking, it chips away at our ability to participate in our communities, in our politics, and make the change in the world that we want to see for our grandchildren. A lot of our ideas about work are based on outdated expectations, and they're based, quite frankly, on corporate greed. I love to work. I love it. I love it, love it, love it. I do. And I decide ahead of time what my relationship with my employers are, wherever they are. And I like to draw good boundaries for myself because they will never do it for me. And I'm chuckling because I believe that's true. I think that we hope that our companies are going to solve these cultural work-life balance issues, but it's a it's a bottom-up approach. We have to advocate for the kind of world that we want at work, in our communities, in our government, in our world. One thing I'd also like to suggest as we're wrapping up is that this strategy of deciding your availability ahead of time It applies to vacation, when you're sick, and even to your average work week. Good luck finding me by phone on a Sunday. On Sundays, it is very typical that my phone is in the other room. 
Maybe if I run errands, I'll bring it with me so my kids can get a hold of me. But I don't do phone work or a lot of messaging on Sundays. I just like to check out. I love that there are a lot of traditions um, around the world where there is a day of rest. And that is mine. My phone has a day of rest once a week where I only use it to check for messages from my kids and to check the weather. You can also introduce your own communication plan that's not just applied to vacation or sick time, but to the cadence of your days and weeks. Our big world is full of annoying, very difficult problems to solve. So please, for you and your families and your neighborhood, do what you need to do to be rested and ready to help us create a prosperous, abundant world for our grandchildren. I think more and more about the long-term consequences of my daily choices, and I think it's fun to use topics like this to explore those. This week, my invitation to you is to complete your own self-assessment of whether you work on vacation and why, what your opinions are about it and why. Do you see yourself influenced by expectation, fear, or Maybe there's so much in your identity of who you are that's related to your performance at work. See this topic as a chance to improve your relationship with yourself and the people you care about. No matter what you decide for yourself, I think it's just so wonderful if it's from a reflective, decided, intentional place. And it's such a great model for the people around us. So enjoy your self-exploration. And until next time. Thank you for listening. If you're enjoying the podcast, please rate and review wherever you listen. This will help other listeners find the show and bring less stress, more fun out into the world. Thank you so much. And I'll talk to you next week.